Jones. Yo, 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 welcome to Truth, everyone. Welcome back to Truth. Today, we're going to be having another conversation with a missionary. Um, shortly, we're going to have him introduce himself. Yeah. But yeah, man, it's your boy, Johns, once again. Come on, it's your boy, Z, you already know. <laughs> yeah, we're in the building, man. Welcome, everyone, man. Um, we're going to get straight into it. Um, we're going to have Pastor introduce himself, um, a missionary, of course. And so, yeah, Pastor, if you can introduce yourself, tell us a bit about yourself and we'll go from there. Absolutely. So, uh, yes, my name is Edwin Matthew and uh, I am from India and I pastor a church in New Delhi district mm. of the Church of Pentecost. Yeah, nice. phenomenal. Um, yeah. Married... Yes, so I am married. I only have one wife. Yeah. You have to uh, state that now. Yes. Have to make it clear <laughs> it's now just like you the last yeah, one. You have yeah, to yeah. state it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I have one wife. Her name is Dr. Beulah Matthew. Oh, nice. um, yeah, and that, that is very much it. Yeah, yes. fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Welcome to the UK. Thank you. Um, we've got a ton of questions um, just to get to know your journey um, mm -hmm. and so forth. And I think my first question that I've been burning to kind of just ask you is your, your testimony, like your, your salvation, how did you come to the Christian faith? What, what did that look like for you? Yes. So um, my great-grandparents <laughs> um, were from a Hindu background. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, they were Hindu priests, actually. Uh, there was a missionary who came all the way from America mm -hmm. to share the gospel with us. Wow. And so the missionary met my great-grandfather, and preach the gospel to that to him, mm -hmm. and since then the whole generation has oh, been wow. uh, wow. has been saved. Yeah. Uh, my my personal journey with the Lord uh, was different, in a way. Okay. Um, since my parents were saved, mm. I was born in a Christian family. Okay, right. Uh, but I always had a lot of friends who were from different faith. Mm. So I always ask myself this question and I always ask God this question. Why am I not in a mosque? Why am I not in a temple? Mm. Why am I not in a monastery? Why am I here? Yeah. Why am I yeah. in a church? Yeah. So basically my life was all about following my parents to church. Mm. So I never had an experience. I never had an encounter with God. I never you know, saw him as God because I was just following my parents yeah. to yeah. church. What you so too. I would just go to my church and sleep. <laughs> you know, <laughs> pick a corner in the and church just nice and just go. Uh, in, in, in India, we we sit down okay. because we have a lot of them, a lot of us. So we don't, we you know, we have chairs for elders, okay. but so what, what, for young ones, we would sit down okay. on carpets. Okay. So we, we used to just you know keep our hands like this and then sleep. Oh, you know, <laughs> so. Um, and there was nothing really relevant mm -hmm. because uh, we did not feel connected mm -hmm. to the uh, church. To the church, right? And uh, the pastor was old, mm. so he addressed more of, you know, more of generation. the uh, more of from his generation. Yeah. yeah. So as kids, we were all bored. Yeah. And uh, so we were not able to connect. But that's when I asked this. I started asking this question to myself and to God: mm -hmm. Why am I in a church? And not in anywhere else. Okay. And that's how God started speaking to me. It was not just one fine night, but it was a process mm. that He spoke to me through the Word of God. And so, um, so this is exactly what He said: "I came for you. Mm -hmm. I died for your sins, and I I did not end there. I rose up from the grave." Mm, come on mm. now. So uh, it made me think, and it made me research about people who have done something similar to this. Okay. And so I started looking at other other gods yeah. and the things that they have achieved okay. while they were on this earth. But I realized that there was nobody in the history of mankind who came, who died for our sins, and who rose up from the grave. Yeah. And that's what yeah. made me, uh, that's what ma attracted me, or I would say that that's exactly what made me accept Jesus as my mm. personal Savior. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. No, that's inspiring. Mm -hmm. That's inspiring. Yeah. I guess just on the back of that then, um, how old was you when that occurred? When you had that point where you got that infamy, that word from God? And then also just following on from that, how did you distinguish to know that, okay, this is actually God speaking to me? 
and not just like you know my thoughts or anything else like that. Mm. Right. So I was around twelve years old. Okay. Yes. Uh, back in those times, um, we had Apostle Leske Bedu. Okay. The wow. former IMD. Yeah. 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 He came over to uh, do missions for a short while. Yeah. Uh, for a mission trip, so he came over, and he stayed at my place. Okay. And so, uh, I looked at him. He used to be in his room, reading the Word of God. And he used to wake up in the morning and pray mm. in tongues. So I always wondered what he's doing, you know, because mm. that was kind of a little new yeah, to me. Yeah. Um, so I, I saw something different in him mm. than anybody else. Mm. So that inspired me to read the word of God. Wow. Mm. So as soon as I started reading the word of God, the word of God spoke to me mm. about what Jesus did yeah, on that beautiful. cross and how he defeated death. And rose up from the grave. So it was basically, you know, sometimes we say, sometimes we, you know, often complain, God is not talking to us. Right. Yeah. God right. is not talking yeah. to us. God is not talking to us. But we need to check if you're opening our Bible or not. Yeah, that's fantastic. If you don't open our Bible, he won't be able to speak to us. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that, that's yeah. the truth. If you don't open your Bible, he was not going to speak to you. Yeah, I love yes. that. That's fantastic. Yes. Nah, that's really beautiful. Nah, that's great. I mean, I don't know if you've got another question, but yeah. I'm just thinking... At this point, at the age of twelve, you mentioned how what, how did your faith accelerate? What did that yeah. have you do? Did yeah. you did you want to be involved in, I guess, the work of God spreading the gospel? How did that change your life? Yeah, at especially at age? twelve as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. So, um, honestly speaking, I had a lot of friends from different faith, so we used to argue a lot. Mm. Mm. You know, we used to talk to each other, and they would just say, you know, you've. Your God is not real. Yeah. yeah, your God is not real. Your God is a Western God. Mm. Uh, you know, he's okay. from America. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. from England. Yeah. He's from UK. Um, and we often argued a lot about it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but in 2005, there was a missionary who actually came to India uh, for treatment. Okay. Um, his name is Pastor Patrick. Okay. He had actually lost one of his legs in a motor accident, mm. motorbike accident. So he came over for some treatment. Yeah. So it was right about time his his, his treatment was over. Okay. He was right. It was right about time that it was he was about to leave. Right. So my father, and Apostle James Raj, the national head. Yeah. Mm. Um. They went. They took him. They took the family to a market. Okay. And it's like. It's it's more or less like Makola market, oh, okay. like Got in Ghana. It. Yeah. It's very crowded okay. and busy, busy <laughs> and things like that. So, uh, I mean, I'm sure there are places like that in London as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Some Stratford. crowded ones, yeah. Stratford. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so when he went there, you know, usually how it happens is uh, if if uh, if you're in India, or as a matter of fact, any developing country, mm -hmm. when they see that you're from a different country, they raise the prices. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so <laughs> something that would cost an Indian twenty rupees mm. would cost hundred rupees for you. Okay. Because yeah. you're from a different country and they assume that you have money. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> wow. So uh my father asked the missionary, uh, Pastor Patrick, okay. um, you know, to to direct him to what he needs. Mm. So that my father can go and negotiate the price and okay, just and buy it won't, yeah, on behalf charge of him, yeah. Yes. So Apostle Raj and the missionary and the wife, uh, they left that place. And my father, where he was, I mean, he, he, he dropped them somewhere and then he came to buy a um, suitcase. Mm -hmm. right. A suitcase. The moment he reached there, there was a bomb blast. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Bomb blast. And people behind my father were shattered into pieces. Shattered. Mm. He literally saw dead people. He literally saw, uh, you know, hands being cut off from people's body. Um, he thought he was in hell mm. <laughs> yeah. because everything around is burning. Mm. And basically, he was near the cloth market, so everything, mm. yeah. everything was fire. was fire, mm. fire, fire. Um, my father thought that he was dead, mm. but Apostle Raj. And, you know, Pastor Patrick, they were a little away from the bomb. Mm -hmm. So they were not that much 
affected. Right. Mm. But my father was very close. Mm. So Apostle James Raj, in the midst of all that is happening, he went, because he was, he was better, mm-hmm. he went looking for my father. Okay. And he started calling his name. And that's when he realized that he was still alive. Mm. You know, because he was, he was conscious, but at the same time, not conscious. Yeah. Yeah, because he was, he was, he was, the shock was so much confused. confused and he was so shocked that he did not know where he was. Mm. So when he heard his name, that's when he realized that he is still alive. Mm. Wow. And the moment Apostle James Raj went there, he saw a table on top of my father's body that protected my father. Okay. So that's when Sunday school, I remember the Sunday school when I was taught mm. Psalm 23. Okay. He lays a table before yeah. my enemies. Yeah. Yeah. So those words came into life mm. and it spoke to me. And yeah. I, was, I, was really, I was really touched yeah. how God saved my father. Yeah. Though he had 40% burns, he had 40% mm. burns. So all that he had is on his body was his belt and his mm. leather shoe. Oof. Because everything else, he was naked, yeah. and he, he was forty percent burned. And if you if you're in the medical field, you know forty percent is enough for a person to die. Oh wow, <laughs> uh, that was I've learned something. I didn't know that, but that yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, so he was he was fully burned. Um, so they were trying to get out of the 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 place where this happened. So when they were moving out, people. Uh, the, you know, the cops, the ambulances were going inside mm-hmm. because they thought because they're walking, they're okay. Yeah, yeah. So they ignored them, mm-hmm. but they would act- they need, actually needed help. The medical attention, yeah. Um, and so while, while this was happening, the wife of the missionary was missing. Wow. She does not speak any other language except Chui. Wow. That's a big problem. <laughs> yes. She did not she did not speak English. She did not have a passport. Oh. She did not have any contact details. Oh she goodness. did not have anything. anything. She was blown away, away from where they were. Mm. So basically, they thought that she's no more. Yeah. Mm. So the pastor who fell down, he 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 was he's quite heavy. And because he did not have his leg, mm. it was hard for him to even get up. Mm-hmm. So you know, they managed to get up. And you know, they he started he started looking for the wife. They all started looking for wife, but yeah. she was nowhere to be seen. Mm. Nowhere to be seen. So what they did was they tried to get into the fire to mm. look for the wife. But God spoke to Apostle James Raj and my father. They held the hands of the pastor and said, God will bring your wife. Wow. Mm. They did not know what they were saying, but those were confessions of faith. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. They, they spoke faith. They spoke life. Mm. They did not know what they were speaking. But as they held their hands, the pastor decided to accept that. Mm. So he left the place. They, uh, all of a sudden, a man with a turban, you know turban? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. He came with a brand new car. He was, not a, he was not a cop. He yeah. was not an ambulance. He had a brand new car. He stopped for them, mm. made them sit inside, took them to the hospital. Oh, wow. Mm. Fine. And to, to be honest, at that point in time, my dad said there were so many cars, nobody stopped because everyone was yeah, scared. Yeah, everyone's scrambling, trying yes, to they, make sure they're, they're they okay are themselves. Yeah. They are safe. So they were all panicked. They, I mean, everyone around were in panic. Nobody mm. stopped. But this man came mm. and picked them and took them. To the wow. So I believe... That man was sent by God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That man was sent by God. Right at the moment they reached the hospital, they were all crying. Till the time they were mm. in the car, they were all crying because they thought they've lost the wife. Yeah. Mm. They were crying, crying, crying. Wow. They entered the hospital. And this hospital that I'm talking about is Asia's biggest hospital at that point in time. Oh, wow. So you, you, you can have possibly uh, 2,000 beds there. So you can imagine how big it is. Yeah. It was a government hospital. So they reached there. They got inside the elevator. The door was about to get closed. At that very moment, somebody pushed the wife into the same lift. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, Can yeah. you believe it? That yeah. is divine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess when you hear stuff like this, it's <laughs> just that then there must be 
there, he must be the god. Yes, he must there must be, be the somebody. One. Yeah, <laughs> yeah has, you can't make that you can't stuff make up. Stuff yeah, up like that. yeah so stuff true. like that is divine. Yes, you, you can't. Whether you're an unbeliever or not, you know that. Okay, something has happened mm. that is be outside of what is what we consider mm-hmm. is the norm. No. And that I think those moments like that actually make us realize how you know um how our lives it really is like vapor mm. as james tells us like it, it really is like vapor you're gone you're here one minute and then you're no more the next yeah, yeah. and so i think at that point you probably you have to attribute it that there must be a god somewhere <laughs> yes yeah, no no, doubt. That is, absolutely that is yeah. absolutely so if she would have missed that lift mm. she would have been lost for days yeah because she did not speak our language. Yeah. She did not have a passport. She did not have any numbers, nothing. But God put her in the light, mm. right lift at the right time. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so whoever is watching us, I want to tell somebody, mm. God knows what you're going through. Mm. God knows what you're going through. Yeah. And he will get you out of there. No, that's fantastic. Amen. Amen. So they went up into the, they, you know, as soon as they saw the, the wife, they were happy. Mm-hmm, they started shouting. They yeah. started shouting shouts of joy. Yeah. yeah, you know, they started rejoicing in the lift. So they got into um, the emergency. They went in, and that's when we got a call. Mm. That you know, you I mean, you know, Apostle James Raj called us, and he said that don't worry, but we are we were affected by the yeah we were in the bomb blast. So our journey from our house to the hospital is like a one hour journey. Yeah. And we got to know that my father is no more. So mm. for that one hour, mm. we thought my father is no more. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. So as soon as we got in, my mother was allowed to get in because she is from a medical background. Okay. So she was allowed to get in. Mm-hmm. She went, there were dead bodies lined up. Oh my gosh. All around, dead bodies. Yeah. Everywhere dead bodies. So my mother started looking for my dad in the dead bodies. In the dead bodies. Oh yeah. yeah. He got so she she took off, you know, the covering and the all faces were burnt. Mm. So they couldn't recognize who it was. Yeah. Who it was. Someone that my mother has never seen comes in, holds my mother's hands and says, The person you're looking for is not here. I will take you where he is. Mm. And my mother says he was wearing white. And, and she has never seen him before mm. because she works in that hospital. She yeah. used to work in that, the same very hospital. Oh, wow. wow. She has never seen that man. So the man took her to my father. So because my mo- mother was really curious to look at my father, she went, as soon as she saw, it was like a glass and she, he, he, the, my father was really away from the glass. Mm. So she went in. And she started meeting and started asking how my father is. Mm. When she turned around, that man was nowhere to be seen. Oh my so that man, she has never seen before and she never saw so him again. after. Mm. Wow. Divine, man. Divine. <laughs> I know people have paused the video hey, and they're scratching their heads. Out, out. <laughs> <laughs> but that is no. wonderful, man. Yeah. Yes. And so the dog, so when we reached out, I mean, when we reached there, we got to know from the doctors that 48 hours we cannot say anything mm-hmm. because he was very very burnt yeah we started praying we started praying as a family we started praying mm-hmm. lord why mm-hmm. in the midst of all that is happening in the midst of you know people around us who know us to be christians mm-hmm. why is it happening to us we asked this question to god mm-hmm. and we knelt on our knees and we started believing him but declaring mm-hmm. you know healing upon him and you won't believe there were a lot of up and downs, mm. but he came out of it. Yeah, we yeah. thank God. Right. And right after he came back to normal, we again got back to our normal Christian life. <laughs> True faith, man, when it's tested, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's it. You know, because yeah. sometimes when issues come, our faith rises. Mm. But when God has responded us, we again go back to our own life. Mm. Mm. So I again became just like a follower of Christ. Yeah, yeah. I mean, going to church, follower of my parents, going to church yeah, yeah. on Sundays, not a relationship with God. Okay. But in 2010, because of the chemicals in, inside of his body, 
all of a sudden he started feeling very very uncomfortable and very weak we took him to the airport uh, we took him to the why am i saying airport <laughs> <laughs> we took him to uh, the hospital yeah and the doctors diagnosed to uh, diagnosed him to have blood cancer and the doctor said two months is the maximum that he'd be alive for wow. maximum he said it's not going to work out it's not going to work out it's not going to work out when everybody said no god said a yes mm. god said a yes yeah. so you know when you when you you know when you share some, you know with, with your family when you tell them somebody has cancer they know that we would go they assume that we will go to them and ask for mm-hmm. money Mm-hmm. Dude, mm-hmm. Because you know we don't have NHS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everything, Everything is, is paid for. Okay. Yeah, you have to yeah, pay yeah, for yeah. it, just like Ghana. Yeah, you have to pay for it. Um, so basically, our family, you know, left us alone. Oh wow! Mm-hmm. So we were all by ourselves. We didn't. We are from a middle class family. Mm-hmm. We did not have enough money to to take yeah. care of my father. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to treat yeah. my father. So my fa- you know, our families and friends who even took money from our parents they left us because mm-hmm. they thought we would go and ask for money yeah. so we were all we were all alone in the storm we did mm. not know what to do and back then i was really young yeah <laughs> how old was you at this point um so i was what 18 or 19 19 18 yeah 19, 18 okay. years or yeah 19 years um so doctors gave up on him mm. uh so there was this time when i had my father in my hands and i could literally see him dying mm. i could see the spirit leaving him oh wow that's tough at that very moment i said if you heal my father i will serve you mm. he healed my father he's still alive 11 <laughs> good years yeah and i'm trying to fulfill the promise that i have <laughs> oh wow serving the lord wow wow that is powerful that's yeah. a really powerful testimony i think it is it's it's something that i think has been on our heart and even i think the the scripture that you know god had laid on my heart at the beginning of the year in first corinthians 2 um, 1 to 5 when just paul's just talking how he doesn't depend on the wisdom of himself or anything like mm. that but he's depending on the power of god mm. and that to make that demonstrate and i think that's the big thing that we want to see i think that's the thing that can change and turn your life upside down sometimes mm. when you know you've put you've tried everything then you've put everything on god and he comes through or he delivers or he shows you something that is beyond the norm mm-hmm. um i really think that strengthens your faith and for you to you know say that okay if you heal my dad i'm going <laughs> to serve you yeah. yeah i think it's really interesting to to see yeah, yeah. Wow, that's fantastic <laughs> so that's how my journey started with the lord yeah. and um you know a lot of people um actually came to us because they never believe that my father went through a bomb blast mm. and then blood cancer yeah. and then he's still healed yeah and that's the stirred a lot of yes. um, people were just i guess they wanted to know how what how? happened here absolutely um and that that leads me to my next question in terms of okay your walk started at that point mm-hmm. was it a matter of starting to preach to a certain group of people or how did you end up going into working for god in that regard all right so there was this time when I looked around and I had a lot of friends who used to play instruments. Okay. Mm. Guitars, yeah. keyboard. Yeah. So I uh said to God, "What well, if you give me this talent? <laughs> I will use it for your glory." Facts. Mm, nice. <laughs> you know. So I went inside my room, I started crying because mm. I felt as if I had no talent. Mm. <laughs> we've had those mm. moments yeah. before. That's actually <laughs> where we've had been there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um I was I I I was feeling very low because I'd always right. thought that I was useless. Mm. I can I cannot do anything. Mm. So I I still remember um I entered my house and I went and cried to my mom. Mm. And um she said go to your room and pray. Come on. Pray in mothers. Yeah. 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 That's what she said exactly. She was she was she was uh try, she was actually trying to I think at that point in time she was trying to cook. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I came running to her and I was crying because I told her Lord, mom I I feel useless. I feel hopeless because I mm-hmm. I I do not ha- I do not have talents. Mm-hmm. People around me are doing such great things. Mm-hmm. I could not sing back then. Um so I was really very 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 discouraged. And that's yeah. when my mom said, "Go to your room and pray." pray. 
And I prayed this prayer back then, there, that if you give me talent, I will use it for your glory. And you only mm-hmm. imagine, it took me one week to learn the basics of guitars. Oh, wow. wow. And in one week, I was equipped to play around and sing. Mm. So my ministry started from music, music. Okay. or you know instruments or leading worship. That's mm. beautiful. Did you have like a um, passion for music prior to that, or was it something that you'd grown up with, like always enjoying music, and then praying as well, cultivated it, and it all came in one, or was it more of a thing where it was just like, yeah, I just want to have a talent and use it for God's glory, and then you got into it like that? How was the dynamic in that sense? Mm. Yeah, I'll be honest, um, I was not a good singer at all. <laughs> so if <laughs> if somebody takes, I mean, there, there were times when we used to go to church right. and um, um, we would practice the song in G, mm. but I will end up singing in another chord. <laughs> <laughs> and people used to laugh at me. That. I said, well, me now. <laughs> yeah. So that brought me really down. Right. Yeah. That brought me really, really, really down. People laughed at me. Um and today, I sing songs in front of thousands of people. Yeah, mm. yeah. And those people who used to laugh at me, now they come for my worship sessions. Yeah, yeah. Because wow. <laughs> now that what you gave us on Sunday was yeah, yeah. Sweet. I enjoyed. Very I had sweet. to get. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed playing. Yeah, yeah no, I really nah, enjoyed playing. That's, that's exciting great. to hear. Still, yeah. um, I think you've been in missions. I don't know for how long, but that's I guess that's one of my questions. How long have you been in missions? And just to throw. A question in there regarding what's been some of the challenges you've found, especially not being in the Western um, world. What what are the challenges that you face? Um, or what have you faced in missions? How, how long have you been in it also? Oh, yes. Um, so, cause, cause, because of the things that I went through in, my, in our family, right. I, did, I, I decided to serve the Lord at a very young age. Okay. How so, old? Um, I, I would be 16 years old. 16. Mm. 16 yeah. years old. Um, I had a friend who joined me. He was a very powerful man of God. Mm-hmm. Um, back then he was a deacon. Okay. Wow. And uh, he was full of God. Mm. Mm. So we both came together and started a church in a living room. Oh. At 16. At 16. 16. How old was oh he? Um, he should be in his... 23 or 24. Oh, so you guys were both young. Yes, Very we young. were both young. Very young. Very young. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Yes. And where where did that burden come from? Was it after, because you see you said, okay, you made the choice to commit. Was it straight from there or was it, how did that come about? Mm. Um. So it was straight after that. Mm. That that happened. Okay. Mm. So... um. It, it was it was not easy. Yeah. It was not easy to reach out to that because I was 16 years old. Mm. <laughs> and, you know, at that at that age, you want to do a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. to be precise, you need, you want to earn a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> because when you see, uh, when you see, uh, you know, friends of your mm. age riding good motorbikes. Yeah. Uh, riding, you know, driving good cars and spending money. Mm. You, know, you want to also do something yeah, similar. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, want to work yeah. hard and yeah. study and become, you know, a person who earns a lot of money. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But, you know, since I had a promise with the Lord, I decided to leave that. Though I was pursuing my education, yeah. but I was into, you know, I was, I planted the church while I was studying. Yeah. Mm. So I, I was doing my, uh, I was doing my, um, uh, my 12th grade. Okay. Um, while I, I, you know, I and my friend, um, uh, you know, started the church. The church. Oh. Uh, it was basically because uh, we felt that, you know, especially the young ones mm. are not able to connect well with, you know, p- people who are yeah. older. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So we, we decided to do something. We, mm. we dis- you know, sometimes we are so, so busy complaining mm. and we, we don't, we, we, we want to see change. Right. But we don't want to make the change. Right. Yeah. Right. You know. Right. But at that it's point in time, we decided to be the change so that we can see the change. Yeah, that's yeah. a word. That's yeah. a word. Yeah. That's a word. Show me the way, show me the way. I've been out here feeling lost, trying to find my way.